I have to uh, talk about the labor movement in uh, Tennessee, uh, Mr. Jerry Lee, who is the president of the AFL-CIO, and with Mr. Uh, Lee is uh, Kwame Leo Lilly, uh, who is the uh, president of the African American Cultural Alliance. And let me welcome both you, uh, Leo, and uh, you, uh, 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 Jerry, to uh, the show this morning. And uh, to tell you how delighted we are to have the two of you here, and, 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 and of course I think our audience already know that the two of you are following a presentation that was made by a younger person. I think, later. We, do, I think <laughs> we need to leave. But what we'd we like to do is to really talk about some of the things, that some of the questions that she raised Absolutely. in reference to this this morning. But first, uh, Mr. Lee, let's see if you can give us uh, some information about your background, education, and your experiences, and then uh, uh, Kwame will give us essentially the same kind of information, and then we'll talk about some other things later on. Then yes, we'll start sir. talking about the labor union, teachers, and except all that. Yes, sir. Thank you, Dr. Hayes. Uh, so I grew up in Gallatin, Tennessee, graduated from high school there. Uh, when I graduated, uh, family didn't really have enough money to send me to college, so at that time it was uh, a lot of opportunity to get in apprenticeship training programs, and I applied for the electrician's apprenticeship program and the CWA communication workers program and TVA and the IBEW electricians called me first mm -hmm. and beginning a long time ago I served a five-year apprenticeship mm -hmm. with the IBEW. Uh, subsequently I worked all over Nashville many of the high-rise buildings you see we worked on. Mm -hmm. uh, when I finished my apprenticeship I went in the U.S. Army, uh, had been deferred for, from the draft in the 60s for uh, the purposes of finishing that program, but I went in the Army in 62, uh, served two years, and uh, came out uh, and was a German electrician, went back to work as an electrician. Uh, then about 72, GI Bill came along, went to the University of Tennessee at Nashville uh, for a long time at night, and I graduated from there with uh, a BS degree. Uh, politically in my union I ran for business manager subsequently after serving many different offices. I was two-term business manager for my local union and uh, when uh, Mr. James Neely went to the state to be commissioner of labor, he was the president of the Tennessee AFSCO mm -hmm. uh, and I ran for that position and I've been there since, uh, since that time for about eight years. I remember that time. Uh, yes. Uh, and, of course, uh, Kwame, why don't you say something about uh, your background? People know that you've been involved. As a matter of fact, you were standing up holding a sign here. And, uh, Absolutely. You, it can truly be said that we represent, the two of us represent perhaps the oldest we part do. of the civil rights we movement. We do, we do. You, you say and, something about and that. We, and we should always be mindful of, of, the, of, the, of the towers and the giants in the labor movement and the civil rights movement, sometimes in the same person. A man named Ethel Randolph, mm -hmm. he wore two hats. He wore the hat of a civil rights advocate, a civil rights pioneer, but also the organizer of the, of the Sleeping Car Porters Union, a very powerful black union. And we should always be mindful, we should never turn the hand loose with the civil rights movement and the labor movement because they are the same, they have the same mission, and that is to bring social justice, to bring equality to the American citizen. They, the, the African Alliance has always has a, has a mission, has in their charter, to make sure that we always stand guard of the rights that we have attained over by, through struggle, through death, through, through a lot of sacrifices. Those, those, those victories we won will not come easy. And, and you, don't, you don't take them lightly. So when there's a chance to develop collaboration with, with a union mm -hmm. or, or, or with workers, we, should, we will always be there with them. Because most of the people we serve in the community mm -hmm. are workers. Mm -hmm. They are not managers. Mm -hmm. They are not executives. They're, they're not the professional people. Mm -hmm. Dr. King went to Memphis mm -hmm. to give his life. Mm -hmm. Not a lawyer's mm -hmm. association, not a doctor's mm -hmm. association, right. but the garbage workers. Work so we should never mm -hmm. forget that. Mm -hmm. And of course, Mr. Lee, uh, what, what uh, d does the AFL have in reference to uh, your particular plan at this particular time? What would you like for folks to do and think in terms of what you're doing? Well, what we're doing is, is trying to create a or re-energize a movement of the working people of this country. Uh, things have gotten so bad for so many reasons. And 
politics being some of those reasons, but there are many reasons offshore, and we've lost a lot of our manufacturing jobs in this country. We've lost uh, uh, our industrial base, and we're talking about 12 to 14 million jobs when we talk about our industrial base. Those jobs are gone, and there'll be a long time if they ever come back. Uh, we are being attacked. They're trying to balance the budget on the back of poor people, working people, uh, and they're giving the ultra-wealthy tax breaks all the same time, and it's just not right. You can't balance the budget of this country on the backs of working people. You know, when you think about AFL uh, and CIO, uh, why don't you give us some idea about how your organization is arranged so that, that in other words, how you touch uh, basically every labor person in this country. There's a national organization. Uh, the AFL-CIO was a, was, a, was a union organization, CIO. Mm -hmm. One was more construction-based. One was industrial manufacturing-based. They merged in 1956. Uh, and recently, uh, in 2005, some of them pulled out. The AFL-CIO started another uh, umbrella union called the uh, Change to Win. But we all work together at all levels to promote the common good of working people, you know, socioeconomic mm -hmm. uh, welfare of people. And so the thing that you're doing, things that you're doing here in the state of Tennessee, they're doing in Alabama and all over the rest of the nation, and this is indeed a, nat well, really an international organization. Absolutely, mm -hmm. it is, and uh, especially with the uh, Canadian unions, uh, we have a lot of Canadian unions in the AFL-CIO, and uh, it's, a, it's not as strong as it used to be, but we're still mm -hmm. strong, and we're still advocating for the working mm -hmm. people. And we also advocate for affiliating with community organizations. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, mm -hmm. you saw some of that in this last demonstration we had uh, mm -hmm. Tuesday. Uh, there, were, there were community groups mm -hmm. and allies there from all over. And, and, and I think what we'll do uh, as we come to the end of this uh, second segment, um, Mr. Lee, is to uh, give you and uh, Kwame an opportunity when we come back to uh, deal with some of the specifics yes. in reference to the things that uh, you dealt with uh, at the uh, state legislature. Because I think that uh, in terms of uh, the threat to the AFL-CIO, it's also a threat to all of these other yes. units and et cetera. So folks want to know exactly what the situation is in reference to that. And we'll talk about that when we come back uh, during our second segment. We'll start with you. And we, of course, we'll be back with you following this uh, short commercial break. Talking to uh, Mr. Jerry.